Amen. Preachers came in with the entire congregations in Israel. That's right. Amen. Just coming from one area to the other. 88 year old man, Bishop Ferguson, contact me. Those of you with the perception that the ministry of Pastor Gino Genes is all about fault finding his fellow ministers, criticizing them in public and wanting to make himself look more holier and more anointed and gifted than the fellow other minister. This particular video is surely going to shock you. Watch how an 88 years old bishop by the name Bishop Ferguson. It is allegedly believed that he is a Catholic bishop who is served over 30 to 35 years in ministry. Now reaches out to Pastor Gino Genis to be baptized by him and then to be taught the proper way of salvation. Even his words of admiration for Pastor Gino Genis and his ministry will definitely shock you. Amen. God give his messengers counsel and then he confirmed the advice that he gives. That's right. My advice comes from scripture. That's right. I have scriptural advice. That's right. So when I tell you God stand behind it, enemies and heathens will say, who do you think he is? God ain't got, oh no, 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 no. God ain't got to do nothing. And what's confirmed unto us God by... says he confirmed unto us by them that heard him. I heard him. Heard him. Don't say I don't believe it. It's too late. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't believe you heard him. Listen to Pastor Gino Nicolius Jennings, born in Temple Hospital, 1963, February the 10th. That's I right. don't care what you don't believe. That's right. I have heard from your Lord. That's right. Before I met you. That's right. And it was Abraham's God. Abraham's God. That's right that assigned me to this task. God also bearing them witness. And this is why I can say that God yes. stand behind it That's right. and confirm it. That's right. And have allowed us to go anywhere. Listen at this, what I'm about to tell you. There's no failure that will ever be made in no city, right. in no state, in no country right. and no town That's right. when the truth of God goes there. That's right. None! That's hard for most preachers to say. The reason why I can say there won't be no failure because the Lord That's right. has spoken. That's right. And he stands behind us. That's right. I say no failure. No I failure. didn't say maybe. No. no. I'm declaring none. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. Do you hear this? In the book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 3. Well, that's why we don't stay stifled. Hallelujah. In no place. Every place. My God, man, souls just come from everywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Preachers came in with the entire congregations in Israel. That's right. Amen. Just coming from one area to the other. 88-year-old man, Bishop Ferguson, contact me. Got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ in the Grand Turkish Islands. He said he'd been going looking for churches for years because he wanted to live right. And I think it was one of his grandsons or something pulled me up on the phone. Amen. 88-year-old man heard this message, went down the water. They sent me a picture of him, went down to the Caribbean and out there in the river and they baptized him and man standing there with a staff and sent me his testimony he said I firmly believe that God has made you an apostle to the Gentiles of today Amen Amen My mission brothers and sisters is plain prepare you to meet God God is closer today than he was 50 years ago. And this message, be holy, is the message for the last day. Not try to be holy. Be holy or go to hell. That's it. 26. That's right. When he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, he cleared it up. And made it plain and says, I am the Lord. That maketh all things. Adam was a thing. Yes, he was. Adam was one of those things that he made. That's right. 
I am the Lord that make all things. That, that stretch, stretch forth, forth the heavens alone. What? That stretch forth the heavens alone. No, a little Jesus helped him. That stretch forth the heavens alone. That straightened that out. That's right. One creator. One maker. That's right. One ruler. Yeah. One God. Yeah. One Lord. One redeemer. That's right. One savior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That stretch forth the heavens. Or the perceptions that people do have about the ministry of Pastor Genogenes, that he always portrayed himself to be so holy, so perfect, and so better than other ministers. That kind of perception that many Christians have about the ministry of Pastor Genogenes should be dropped at least by now. Yes, I understand biblically that the Bible admonishes that believers dwell it in unity. I know of a scripture where the Bible said the unity of the brethren. It is as the oil that flows from the head to the garment of Aaron in the book of Psalms. And I know also that Jesus did spoke about the unity of Christians. He did spoke about the togetherness of believers. Where Jesus said a kingdom divided by its own cannot stand. Now, it is something that we have to look at. The work that Pastor Genogenes is doing, many people think as though the man is speaking out of his hatred for certain people. But at the long run, if you take your time, listen to his messages and begin to analyze some of his messages, you wouldn't really conclude that Pastor Genogenes is only out there looking for few ministers or popular ministers to castigate them, to lambast them, to drag them, or to degrade them just so that he will stay relevant. You see, we know that Pastor Genogenes is very vocal when it comes about, you know, speaking against whatsoever he believes is an error either committed by a pastor, a believer, or a gospel icon. And so by that, many people will always conclude that he is always just after fame. He always just wants to sound spiritual, wants to sound perfect. And sometimes people will just say, he's only judging other ministers of the gospel. Listen, you have a point, but let us also look at the, his style of preaching, his presentation of the gospel in a different way. Listen, we have many, many mega pastors today who have compromised the gospel they preach. We have many Christians today who have compromised the Bible that we read, either by their character, either, either by their lifestyle, either by certain things that they know is error and can't boldly speak up against. Now, look at just this particular video. Now, Pastor Genogenes is being a blessing to an 88 years old bishop who just found out that wherever he is at the moment, he is in a path going to hell. And so he's writing or reaching out to Pastor Genogenes and even was seeking if permission will be granted that Pastor Genogenes baptize him and then teach him the way, the righteous way to salvation. So it is one particular issue that we all have to come to a point to also accept the kind of ministration Pastor Genogenes is giving to the people of the world today. Because the Christianity we have today, it looks as though mostly anything Christianity stands for, in anything Christianity condemns, in anything the Bible speaks against, is almost being compromised. It's almost being accepted. And it's almost being believed by the people of the world today. And so this is the reason why at this particular time, people have to learn to accept his kind and his style of presentation, the presentation of the gospel. Now, if you listen to the style and the way of, of Jesus Christ as he was preaching the gospel, it is not similar to the way and the style of John the Baptist when he was equally preaching. Now, if you study the two, you will see that Jesus Christ, his kind of preaching sometimes was a bit soft 
and the ministration of John the Baptist was sometimes also very hard and very deep. And it is one particular kind of ministration the world today or believers today must learn to adapt to. We are used to preachers condoning things. We are used to preachers preaching the gospel as though they are begging people to believe in God. We are used to preachers who preach a compromised gospel that they don't really want to tell you what really the Bible stands for. And usually the agenda behind or the, the mentality behind is that when they tell you exactly what the Bible stands for, they believe that many people may leave the church and wouldn't stand as a Christian. And so most people today preach a compromised gospel. There are many ministers who are aware of a man and a woman who are living together as a husband and wife when the man has never paid the dowry of the woman. And so the man of God knows that this man is living in fornication, number one, that the Bible speaks again, number two, that it is not permitted for a man to live with a woman that you haven't paid her dowry or her bride price. It is against scripture and it's unscriptural, yet many preachers can't speak against this. It is a similar issue we have today in the church. We have other people that go to church yet are addicted to smoke. We have other people that go to church today who are addicted to sex. We have other people today who go to church today who are addicted to fornication, who are addicted to porn, who are addicted to stealing, who are addicted to gossiping, who are addicted to, you know, fighting and other things they do that we know that creature entirely condemned. Yet because of a compromised gospel that has been shared around the world, it has become very difficult for other people to really preach the truth about the gospel. And that is the situation the church is going through today. So whatever Pastor Dino Genesis is doing, though I know um, at some point it can be harsh, at some point it can be, it can be so hard, but we also see the benefit side of his ministry, the benefit side of his presentation, and the benefit side of how his ministry is blessing people. One of the things you have to understand that Pastor Genogenes often introduces his ministry as a ministry that believes in holiness, as a ministry that preaches sanctification, as a ministry that believe in living of the holy life. And so definitely, when a preacher's ministry stands for holiness, usually that is the kind of energy that comes along with. And so people must learn to endure, to adopt, and even accept the gospel the way it comes from. Don't forget that the Bible said that whomsoever receives a rebuke from the law, it is the same that the law love it. And so rebuking is part of a love language or a love sign from a good father to a child. And that is what people are lacking, people are failing to understand because they are used to a gospel that is preached in a soft way. They are used to a compromised gospel. And Pastor Gino Genesis is a man who does not preach the unadulterated kind of gospel. He does not preach a contaminated gospel. He does not preach a diluted gospel. And so whenever he's delivering and ministering the word of God to you, definitely you might not like him because of the energy that comes with it. But in this particular video, we see the benefits of a style and presentation of his preaching. And so this is why we should not conclude on him that he's always out there condemning ministers. He's always out there degrading other ministers. Aside that also, even though judgment is in the hands of God, but should we watch to see other great heroes of the gospel today fall? That is not the issue. So the same way another minister, even when they want to correct a fellow minister who have gone into an error, would correct through the instrument of love, it is the same way another minister may not come through that channel and will come in a hard way. 
Let us not perceive those actions as a minister that hates a fellow minister, a minister who is out there with only the only purpose to degrade and destroy a fellow minister. This has been a blessing to a body of Christ. We hope that we will learn from this and we ask God to help us to have a heart that is willing to accept our mistakes and then also repent and walk in a proper way that at the end of the day, we, we wouldn't miss heaven. This is Abel Global Prayer. See you again in my next episode. Stay always blessed and anointed.